Hello students. In today's video, we are going to understand the concept of spare receptors or receptor reserve. This video is third in the series of videos on pharmacodynamics. Now, as we all know, drug molecules bind to the receptors, activate receptors and produce pharmacological response. Now, as per our assumption, a drug should bind to all the available receptors so as to produce the maximal 100% response. Now, here maximum response is a response which cannot be further increased by increasing the dose of a drug. Now, many drugs produce maximal response at a concentration where they do not occupy all the available receptors. Now, such drugs are called as the agonist. Now, spare receptors or receptor reserve are the receptors that exist in excess of those required to produce maximal 100% response by the agonist. Now, let's say a tissue has 1000 receptors, but the drug or the agonist produces its maximal response by binding to and then activating only 100 receptors. So here 900 receptors are spare receptors or reserve receptors. Now let's understand the concept of spare receptors with the help of few examples. Our first example, acetylcholine is an agonist at neuromuscular junction. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter which is produced in the body. Acetylcholine binds to nicotinic and M receptors which are found to be present on neuromuscular junction and produces contraction of skeletal muscles. Now acetylcholine produces its maximum response at a very low level of receptor occupancy. Now less than 1% of NM receptors are occupied by acetylcholine and more than 99% of receptors are left spared. They are not used. So here very small concentration of acetylcholine is required to produce maximum response. So this type of system leads to economy of uh, neurotransmitter as very small quantity of acetylcholine is required to be produced and to be released so as to produce the maximal 100% effect. Another example is of uh, uh, myocardium. Myocardium possesses large number of spare receptors. Now myocardium is made up of cardiac muscles. Now catecholamines like adrenaline, noradrenaline produce contraction of myocardial muscles so that the heart contracts and pumps the blood. And this response is called as the inotropic response. Now maximum inotropic response to catecholamines is produced when less than 10% of receptors are occupied. So that uh, we can say that more than 90% of receptors exist as spare receptors in the myocardium. In order to further understand the concept of spare receptors, let's try to understand two parameters. Now first is EC50 or ED50. EC50 is half maximum effective concentration and ED50 is half maximum effective dose. Uh, they are one and the same. Now it is the EC50 or half maximum effective concentration EC50 is the concentration or the dose of drug required for producing 50% of the maximum response. Now look at this figure, look at the figure 1 on the x axis is plotted log dose of agonist or the drug while on the y axis is plotted percentage response produced. Now, uh, as the dose is increased, the percentage of response also increases. Now, EC50 is the dose or concentration of drug that produces 50% of the maximal response. Another important parameter is the KD. KD is the dissociation constant of drug receptor complex. Now, as we all know, a drug has to bind to a receptor to produce the response. Now, higher is the number of receptors occupied by drug molecules, more will be the response. 
Now, KD is the concentration of drug at which 50% of the receptors are occupied. Now, look at this figure 2. On X axis, long dose of the drug is plotted, while on Y axis, percentage of receptors occupied by the drug are plotted. Now, uh, as, is, as it is clear from the curve over here, KD or dissociation constant is the dose or the concentration of drug that occupies 50% of the receptors. Now, regardless of drug, when the drug is given at a concentration equal to its dissociation constant, 50% of the receptors will be occupied. So, EC50 is the dose of drug. EC50 is the dose of drug which produces 50% of the maximum response and KD is the dose of drug that occupies 50% of the available receptors. Now let's further try to understand how to find out if spare receptors are present or they are not present. Now look at this figure. On x-axis we have plotted percentage of receptors occupied by the drug while on the y-axis is plotted percentage of maximal response produced by the drug or agonist. Now there are two drugs drug A and drug B. Now this is the curve for drug A, this is the curve for the drug B. Now this is the maximum 100% response. Now drug A does not occupy all the available receptors to produce maximum 100% response. So this maximum 100% response is produced by the drug A by occupying only 40% of the receptors. Now rest 60% receptors are not used by the drug A and thus these receptors are the spare receptors. While for the drug B, drug B occupy all the 100% receptors to produce maximal 100% response. So drug B has no spare receptors. Now again look at the graph, uh, look at the curve of the drug A. Now 50% of the response is produced by the drug A when, when only 20% of the receptors are occupied. So for drug A, EC50 is less than KD. So if EC50 is less than AD, it indicates the presence of spare receptors. That is if half maximal effective concentration or the dose is less than the dissociation constant, it indicates the presence of spare receptors. Now again look at the uh, curve for the drug B. Now 50% uh, of the receptors are occupied by the drug B to produce 50% of the maximal response. Now this 50% of the maximal response is produced by half maximal effective dose that is EC50 of the drug. So for the drug B, EC50 is equal to KD. Now when EC50 is equal to KD, it indicates that no spare receptors are present. Now let's discuss the significance of spare receptors. Now presence of spare receptors increase sensitivity of the tissue to the agonist as drug receptor interaction increases in proportion to the number of receptors available. That means more is the number of receptors available, more will be the sensitivity of tissue to the drug. Secondly, less endogenous hormone or neurotransmitter is required to produce maximum response. This we have already discussed in the case of uh, the action of acetylcholine on the neuromuscular junction. Another significance is this that low efficacy drugs could be used for the therapy because of the presence of spare receptors. Now another significance, high receptor reserve provides a safety margin for receptor activation which could be of importance in the disease state. That means if some receptors become inactive because of a disease, the agonist or the drug 
will still be able to achieve maximum response because of the availability of spare receptors but obviously at a higher dose. So this is in brief on the concept of spare receptors. Now if you find the video useful kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.